have seen TV shows about crime-fighting psychologists who interpret body language to find the killer. Hopefully, you won't need interpretive skills for that. <laughs> but having a basic knowledge of nonverbal cues can definitely help you in the workplace in other ways. Does your boss actually like your idea, or is she just giving it lip service? Does your new acquaintance at the networking reception want to keep talking with you, or split? Are you right in suspecting that your colleague may not be so much of a friend as a frenemy? Nonverbal cues don't reveal everything, of course, and there can be misfires or conflicting information. Maybe you think someone is wrinkling their nose at you in disgust, and they're actually just in the middle of allergy season. But as long as you can take these cues as hints or pieces of information, they can form useful nuggets of data you can compare against other sources, and combined, they can paint a far more reliable picture. Here are a few things to keep in mind. First, take a look at whether their body language is open versus closed. If they're closed off, they may have their arms crossed, or they're otherwise protecting their body. If they're open, their arms are free, and their torso is exposed, which is a sign of comfort and trust, just like it is for dogs or cats that let you rub their bellies. Now, a closed body posture could mean a number of things. Number one, most innocuously, it could mean they're cold. So if the heat's broken in your office, don't worry if your colleagues start doing this. But it could also mean they're feeling nervousness or hostility towards you in some way. Again, you have to compare it with other data, but it's worth noticing. Second, take a look at where your colleague's feet are pointed. This is a subtle tell, but really useful in situations like parties or networking events. People's feet will point in the direction they want to be headed. So even if their upper body is pointed toward you, if their feet are headed out the door, they're not far behind. That's where their body is telling them they should go. So try to take note and respectfully wind down the conversation. Even if they're not consciously aware they want to be out of there, their subconscious will be grateful to you for not detaining them. Finally, watch out for mismatched expressions. If someone's smiling, but the corners of their eyes aren't crinkling, it may be a pro forma smile, one they don't really mean. Of course, it could also be Botox, so pay attention to the full context, but it's one clue to look at. Another thing to be mindful of is subtle expressions of contempt. We all know what this looks like if you've ever been or been in possession of a teenager. Rolled eyes, smirking, or the like. Adults generally aren't so obvious about it, but if you see quick flashes of those behaviors, that's what psychologists call leakage, because people are generally trying to contain it, but it leaks out. Put on your observer hat, and if you notice something, even a quick moment, it could be extremely informative. Nonverbal cues are subtle but powerful, Learning to recognize and master them can help you understand far better where you really stand with your colleagues and clients. 